So back to the topic, um, space, you know, I've never really been that keen on going to space. I've never really been that interested in it. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the traveling type of person. You know, there's a lot of people that want to see the world and travel around and experience everything. And, you know, I'm not one of those people, you know, maybe people, th some people think I'm weird because of that, but I I'm totally content just staying in the same place my whole life, you know. I've lived in the same state for 99% of my life, so I really have no desire to see new things, experience new things, you know. Like, some people live in their senses, other people live in their minds. I'm one of those person who lives in my mind. You know, like, there's the guy who, uh, I don't remember his name, but the guy who did Owl City, who's the who has the band Owl City, he, he basically takes flights of mind, you know, into different places, you know. Just while he was living in his mom's basement, you know, he had, he wrote songs about California and the West Coast and all of this stuff, and he was in the middle of the country in a basement. And, uh... Yeah, and you know, one of Da Vinci's, the uh, biographies of Da Vinci was Flights, was named Flights of Mind. So that biographer felt that the term Flights of Mind described Da Vinci more than, than any other um, thing he could say about him. So there's some of us who live in our minds, some of us who experience the world in our minds. And we don't need the sensory stimulation of seeing different parts of the world and all of this. And, you know, and that's totally fine. I mean, for some people, that gives them inspiration, seeing new things, meeting new people, hearing new sound, you know, things like that. But, and I do get inspiration from that, but I get a lot of inspiration from music, like trance music. That's one of my biggest inspirations. And, uh... Yeah, you know, that's probably my bi biggest inspiration, I mean, is listening to music. And, uh, yeah, maybe you could say that I could uh, get that inspiration listening to music from um, traveling the world and listening to different musics, but my favorite type of music is trance, and there's something about trance, and, you know, and I guess if I wanted to travel and experience different trance, I would go to Ibiza. Spain, you know, I might go to some uh, European countries and go to their nightclubs, you know, and experience some trance. And, you know, that does that does intrigue me, and that might actually be something that I would like to do at some point. Um, at some point, I actually want to become a trance composer, which I've kind of begun uh, becoming, and you know, maybe I can uh, travel around a little bit doing that, you know, compose, you know, spin in some trance in clubs and things like that. And that would be fun for me, but other things, you know, like hiking doesn't appeal to me at all, you know, like zero. I did hike in Alaska and, you know, the, the terrain was so big that it, it, it did slightly inspire me. Alaska did slightly inspire me, but, you know, it's so dangerous that, you know, a lot of times I'm just worrying about giant mosquitoes and bears and stuff to really be inspired, you know, it's... Nature's a rugged place, you know, so I gain most of my inspiration from music. I mean, I really can't think of the last time I was inspired by the world around me, which is kind of, I guess, sad sounding, but that's a fact, you know. So, yeah, um, and I do look at biological systems and how they work and imitate them and things like that, but it doesn't really get my passion flowing, looking at biological systems and things like that, but anyway, so I've never really been the traveling type. Um, I've never really been the type to want to leave Earth. I've never really wanted to visit space. Never really wanted to go to the moon. Just didn't, never really excited me. So, yeah. But, 
with the laws that I have, the new advanced Newtonian physics laws, the fourth and the fifth laws, it seems like I could go to space. Well, it seems like I could become an astronaut pretty easily. And the definition of an astronaut, um, some people's definition is uh, if you can make it 50 miles away from Earth. Other people's definition is if you can make it 90 miles away from Earth. Some people say 63 miles. But, you know, roughly around there, I think the United States definition is greater than 50 miles. So, if I could make it 50 miles from the Earth, I could be an astronaut, you know. Uh, yeah, so 50 miles from Earth, astronaut. You know, that's really not that difficult. I mean, you could really do it with a rocket. You just take a rocket up, you hit your ejection button, and you've got a parachute, and then you just fall down for, say, 40 miles, and then you pull your chute, and, uh, you glide down to earth I mean you could easily become an astronaut with a rocket I don't think it's that difficult I mean your rocket would probably start losing thrust at like 30 40 miles but if you have enough fuel you could just you could just get so fast that you just kind of coast up to 50 and then fall back down but not everybody can get clearance to launch giant rockets like that so the question is using my fourth and fifth law can we go become astronauts easier than rockets rockets are so inefficient at that altitude you know it's it's almost impossible to become an astronaut with a rocket but using our fourth and fifth law our fourth law is directionality and our fifth uh, and our fifth law is resistance so if we have very directional um, force transfer and we have uh, a high resistance then we can transfer a lot of force and be very efficient in what we're doing so um, you know when you look at biology at the at the molecular level things things move around by creating creating stuff so out of themselves you know like you can think of a spider you know a spider spins a web out of itself and it it travels along that web right so that that's really how we can travel large distances away from earth is <gasps> to basically follow the spider's lead you know if we could you know be spider men and actually like uh, have have a, a web between the moon and the earth so we can travel along the web, right? And just um, climb the web up to the moon. Another way is if we lay down stuff. We kind of build a tower underneath ourselves. You know, we carry stuff with us and then we, instead of shooting it out into the atmosphere like a rocket does, you you use that mass and build it into you build it into a tower underneath yourself. So you just kind of, you're shooting uh, maybe a non-Newtonian fluid that just kind of builds up underneath you. You know, and that's that's how uh, proteins and stuff um, move around in cells. You know, like, um, yeah, like polymerases, things like that. You know, how proteins move around in cells is they lay a framework underneath them. So they lay a framework underneath them and kind of build themselves up to where they want to go and then they can move along that framework and stuff. <clears throat> so the process of building a framework like that means that the forces you use are going to be very, um, very, they can be very directional and they can be very resistive. So that means you can transfer a lot of force along there and you can be very efficient in, in the force that you're transferring. So, um, yeah, so the question is how exactly do you do it? I mean, I'm thinking that the, the best 
analogy I can come up with right now would be like a rocket that instead of spraying gas, you spray spray foam. You know spray foam, how you, you spray it and then it it expands and stuff. That would be a good type of material to use to get your to to leave the earth. Okay, so you basically spray foam your way up kind of thing. You ride a column of spray foam. Alright. That type of thing. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly spray foam, but it has to it's something that can uh that's di pretty directional and um highly resistive so you know resistive means that you can apply a force for a long period of time you know that that spray foam grows with you and stuff so it, you're it's a you are applying a force and it's applying a force to you for a long period of time so it's very resistive and it's also quite directional you know because as it expands most of that force is being transferred up to you so it's pretty directional, it's pretty resistive. So that's the type of thing that we would do using uh, our fourth and fifth law to actually become astronauts. And to become an astronaut, you just have to get 50 miles away from the Earth. So using something analogous to spray foam, I think we can we can get there. So, so that's the application. That's the application of the fourth and fifth law. So I hope that helps you. I... Am the nature hacker. Do work.